Hello everyone and welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. Today we are on episode number 104. Today we're going to be going over the Conditional Fields module and this is a really cool module that allows you to display or hide various fields based on the values of other fields. You can do a whole bunch more with it but that's in essence the basics of what it is. We'll go over it and go over a quick example and show you how you can begin using it on your Drupal websites. But before we get started, I'm Shane Thomas. You can follow me on Twitter at smthomas3. Also head over to codecrowdy.com, sign up for the newsletter. And if you haven't checked out today's sponsor already, please check out drupalize.me and use the coupon code CK20FEB for 20% off anything at drupalize.me. Drupalize.me is one of the best ways to learn about Drupal. It has very informative Drupal videos from basic concepts all the way to some of the most advanced Drupal concepts you'll need when building your Drupal websites. So go ahead and take a look at them and tell them thanks for sponsoring the Daily Dose of Drupal so we can make these videos happen. Let's go ahead and get started. I have the conditional fields module already installed on my Drupal website as you can see here. The great thing about the conditional fields module is it's set up to work with pretty much any entity that you can imagine. So it works with comments, nodes, in this case I have the field collection module installed, private message, taxonomy term, users, anything that has fields it pretty much works with. Uh, it's only in a dev state so keep, in, keep that in mind. It's not necessarily 100% ironed out so make sure you test it thoroughly before using it. It's not recommended yet to use on production sites but you'll have to go ahead and try it out for yourself and make that decision. Before we get started on configuring this because there are a lot of configuration options and I'm not going to be able to go through all of them I'm going to show you the simple content type that I've created. I just called it test. It has a couple different fields in it and it's all about just favorite foods. So I'll go ahead and I'll just actually add a test piece of content. Asks for a title, asks for my favorite foods, but I want these fields not to necessarily all display. So for instance, if I select, select fruits here, I want this field, what are your favorite fruits, to show up. Then out of these checkboxes, if this other checkbox is checked, I want this other fruit text box to actually show up. I only want this favorite vegetable which is just an image upload field for an example if this vegetables option is selected otherwise I don't want to see it and same with this other food text area only if other is selected here so basically when I get to this form I want to see a title field and this favorite foods and depending on what I select here I want to display other fields dynamically like I said this is only one example you can do a whole bunch with this as an extremely flexible module but once you see the example here, hopefully you can figure out different ways that you can use it on your sites. So I'll go ahead and get started. And in this overview page, it has a, basically all the different options that are up here. Because it's a little bit long, I'm going to go ahead and click on just Node, which is just going to show this, everything in this section. As you can see, a lot of the sections are empty. And basically that's because there aren't at least two fields so you have to have at least two fields because one field has to be dependent on the other field so I'll click on node here just to simplify the interface a little bit and I'm going to scroll down to my test content type the first thing is to add a new dependency and the dependency is always going to be dependent on something else which is the dependee so the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to select I'll start at the bottom actually I want this favorite fruits well, I'll go ahead and say I want other food so that's at the bottom that's the text area and it's going to be dependent on this favorite foods field and just as an, just so we can take a look I'm going to open up the manage fields option so we can take a look this other food text area I want dependent on this favorite foods so you can look at the machine names and the labels and I I want the dependent field to be visible when the dependee so the dependent field this other food to be visible when the dependee 
has a specific value which is correct so I'm gonna go ahead and click add and this is just another this page just rehashes some of what we went over so it's gonna be based on the value and it's going to be values inserted from the widget and the favorite food we're gonna select is other so if other is selected we're gonna display that text field interaction with other dependencies so when this dependent has more than one how should this condition be evaluated so you can go ahead and use that if it needs to interact with other dependencies we want it to be visible but you could make it visible invisible filled with a value disabled checked there's a whole bunch of options it's not just show and hide show and hide is probably the most common use case but it's not the only one so you have a bunch of different options of things you can do different states you can apply to that form field you can show and hide fade in fade out slide up slide down I'm gonna go ahead and select slide up slide down for this first one you can select the speed there's a couple other options here you can activate per user role settings you can hide the dependent if the dependee is not in the form so if for some reason I don't have permission to see this favorite foods box you can force this one to be hidden which is a good rule of thumb but you can of course control it here and reset the dependent to its default values when the form is su submitted if the dependency is not triggered so essentially if you want to make sure the value gets reset when the form submitted if for some reason the dependency is no longer triggered you can go ahead and set that advanced I'm not going to go over that and there's a couple other options here just with the view context settings and I'm not going to go over all those but you can read through those and try those out so we're going to go ahead and give this one a quick try so essentially I should see all these fields except for this last one if I select other you'll notice that the other field or other food field slides down if I pick something else it no longer slides down anymore and it just works let's go ahead and quickly browse through these other ones to get it working the way we want it to we want this favorite what are your favorite fruits field as a dependency on favorite foods as well it's going to be dependent's going to be visible when the dependee this favorite foods field again has the value in this case of fruit I'm going to leave everything else this one I'll just leave show hide as an example leave all the other options the same click save and I will add one for vegetables as well so we want favorite vegetables dependy uh, or it's the dependy is the favorite foods the same thing it's gonna be visible when it has the value of in this case vegetables leave all the rest the same we'll save it and we'll go ahead and create another one now you can see it's getting a little closer I select fruits I only see the fruit select vegetables I only see the vegetables I select other the other field slides in I just need this other fruit now to be dependent on this checkbox so I'm gonna add that to dependency as well and as you can see these basically just build upon each other so you can have a whole bunch of different dependencies on one form it's really uh, I guess just a dependency building tool for as many fields as you may need so I'm gonna select other fruit as a dependency this is based on your favorite fruit field and it's going to be visible when the dependee has the value of other and this one I'll go ahead and fade in fade out I'll make this fade in fade out a little bit longer so we can really see it that it's working and we'll save it and we will give this a quick test I select fruits it shows up I select other and I can select other ones as well but as soon as I uncheck other you can see it fades out if I select this other here you'll notice that there's a couple other there's a couple issues because since this field is still technically setting these values this field is still displaying so what we'll need to do here is we can add a couple other things we're going to have to change a little bit on these settings to make sure that it is no it is only set when 
the other one is displayed. So we're going to go ahead and click the hide the dependent if the dependency is not viewable by the user and the dependency is not triggered. Let me make sure I'm on the right one here. Oops, I selected the wrong one. Let me go back. I want to go to other fruit and select that checkbox. Hide the dependent if the dependency is not viewable by the user and if the dependency is not triggered. Let's try that out and see if that's going to do it for us. And no, it doesn't look like it's going to. So let's look at this one more time. I'm pretty sure there's a way to get this to work. So I'll take a quick look here. So what we're going to need to do here is we're going to need to add another dependency for this other fruit field because essentially we want to make sure that the other fruit field only displays one when the other checkbox is checked but it also needs this favorite foods field to be selected as fruit otherwise we don't want it to display so I went ahead and I select this and we're going to say the dependent field is visible only when the dependency has the value of in this case fruits this is where the interaction with other dependencies come in because here it's acting with an and so basically we're saying we only want this other fruit field to be displaying when there's the checkbox on other and the select box on fruits so it has to meet both conditions before this will display so I'll leave this here and click save you can see now it adds this little dependency here so it says other fruit it's dependent on favorite foods when favorite foods has a value of fruits and when your favorite fruits has selection of other so let's go ahead and give this a quick try now if I select vegetables it works of course just like it did before so does other I select fruits everything's working I select other shows up now when I select something else this other fruit should go away which it does and it of course brings up the favorite vegetable or if I select other it brings up the other food you'll notice when I come back to fruits it saved this value so the other fruit is still displaying so it remembers where you're at it does a nice job of showing and hiding things and allowing you to make really dynamic and flexible forms for your various entities that any, any type of entity that has fields one of the things you will notice is that since these values have been selected if you don't want these values to be submit I believe you that's where this checkbox of reset the dependent to its default values when the form is submitted so basically if the dependency hasn't been triggered this will reset it to its default values which in this case was blank so just keep that in mind go ahead and give this module a try it's very flexible it's a little confusing because there's a lot you can do with it but it's extremely powerful when you figure out how to get all the different dependencies to interact with each other and how to build those really interesting and complex forms thanks again to drupalize.me for making this thing possible and thank you for watching the daily dose of drupal i will see you next time